Welcome to part 7 in this unit tutorial series and in this video I'm going to set up a player identity so a unique identity for each player based off their network identity ID value and this is going to be used for hit detection later and um, well I guess I might as well get into it so first of all I'm going to make a new C sharp script and I will call it player ID and my end objective is that the player prefabs will be assigned a unique name. So on each game instance, uh, each of the players listed will have unique names on their game objects. And that's uh, pretty much essential for, uh, well, with my implementation of hit detection. All right, so I'll go ahead and attach the script. All right, and then I'll open it up and start editing it. Um, all right, so immediately using um, Unity Engine dot networking, and I change this to a network behavior. All right, and then I'm going to use a different function this time, override. Uh, and a uh, one of the viewers pointed out that this is the correct one to use uh, when uh, basically when. Uh, starting up a local player and doing stuff locally on that player, getting stuff set up and so on. And I'll just get rid of that for now. And my intention is to run two functions here, get net identity. And also I want to set name. So set the name of that uh, player or set identity rather. Yeah, it shouldn't really be name, probably should be set identity. Yeah, set identity, that sounds a bit better. Okay, and what's going to happen is that, uh, well, I need some variables. So first of all, a sync var, and I will set this to, I think, public for now, just so you can see in the inspector what will appear, player unique name, and then I'll set it afterwards to private. Uh, and then private, uh, this is a new type I haven't used before, network instance ID. And this will be, uh, I'll be taking something off of the network uh, identity. Uh, and then I will call this player net ID. That's pretty simple. And a, uh, eh, why not private transform, uh, my transform. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on the local player, get this unique uh, net player net ID from the network identity, turn it into a string that can be used as a name and then give that to the server. The server will then sync it to all the remote clients and then I'll have another function for actually applying that uh, identity to the game objects so that each game object uh, will be unique. All right, so now I'm gonna change the start function to awake instead so that I can set my, uh, my transform. That way there's just no delay and it'll happen immediately. And uh, I guess I should make these functions now. So I'll, I'll, I'll start with get net identity. And I know it's going to be run only on the client. Uh, well, I guess that's not necessary to write that. But I am anyway, because it just tells me, but it only ever can run a client. This is not gonna run on the server just because it's never called on the server. Uh, okay. And then uh, when I do that, what I'm going to say is very simply, pl player net ID is uh, that value is equal to a get component. And what component am I getting? I'm getting the network identity that's attached to the player. And I am getting what value? The net ID. Okay, done. And then next of all, I am actually going to run a command. So I haven't made that yet. Tell server uh, my name. Um, that's, I guess that's a reasonable name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have another function that's a string that returns a type of string and uh, it will actually create the name for me. So make unique, make unique name. And all right, so I'll first start off by making this function here uh, that makes the unique name and it's going to be of the type string and uh, that's about it, okay. And very simply, very, very simple. I'll say string, I'll create a, uh, a variable on the fly called unique name that is equal to player plus, um, oh, and I should give a little bit of space there, plus uh, player net ID dot two string. All right. 
and then return that. So return unique. All right. So that's done. That's taken care of. Next, I will make the command. And of course, the attribute command. Uh, void. OK, tell server my name. And it needs an input, so string. And I'll just call that name and go ahead and make it. So this command is a uh, player unique. Oops, can't spell. Player unique name is equal to the supplied name. Okay, that's very simple. So now the server is going to get the variable and it's going to sync it across the network. Nice, easy, simple, no problem. Uh, okay, next, uh, well, I need to set the name, right? That set identity. Uh, okay, and um, I don't really like my terminology, really. Yeah, that's it's no good. I'm going to call this identity instead. It, yeah, it really is no good because I know that player name is different from identity because the player name is what they type in that this is my uh, player name. So I'm going to change this so I don't run into confusion later on with what the purpose of this script is when I forget eventually. OK. All right, so that's it. So I've quickly uh, rectified that and, and now I need to set that identity. And uh, it's a client only function. I don't want it running on the server because, of course, the server already has this variable, but now the clients need to, uh, well, apply that. Um, so, how will I do that? Well, I guess, um, hmm, I suppose I could. I could, uh, I could, uh, well, first of all, I should write the function void set identity. How about I just copy that? Done. OK. Hmm. Actually, I'm thinking about that. I think I will remove that because I do want the server to set the name to the game objects as well. So it's not just the not just on the clients only. Uh, so then if uh, is not uh, it's not the local player, then Yep, go ahead and assign that to the my transform dot name is equal to a player unique name. Okay, done. Next, else if it's the local player, then uh, for them they need a bit more. Uh, they need to actually construct the name, so make unique identity. All right. And how about I change this? Uh, I will replace uh, these with. Instead of unique name, I will put that player unique identity to stop the confusion. All right, done, done, done. Okay, okay, that's good. So coming back, all right, so that almost looks like it'll work, not quite, because at the moment the identity only gets set on the local player. I need to set it on the remote clients as well, and I choose to do it with the update function just because it takes just a, a little bit of time for this value to be sent from the server to the client who's just joining. So of course, if I try to run this on their start or awake function or something like that, the set, a set identity function, well, nothing useful is going to happen. Uh, so I'm going to use this uh, in the update function and it'll just take care of that uh, momentary uh, delay. If my transform.name uh, is equal to an empty string uh, or my transform, uh, which is this one's more likely, my transform.name uh, is, uh, is, uh, is equal to a player clone because this is what gets written actually when they uh, get instantiated and spawned into the game. Okay, um, and then I will just set name. Uh, whoops. Set name. Oh, set identity. I'm confused myself already. Okay. Uh, okay, so I think that's it. It should work. Maybe it will work. Rather, that's what I should say. I should just make sure. Oh, uh, okay, so I've made a mistake here, and I forgot to just put my brackets, that's all. Uh, okay, that's a bit better. Now let me have a look. Okay, that's cleared up. Let me just check. Uh, oh, it all just does that. Let me just have a look again. Yep, it's all there. Apply and get rid of the player prefab. Build. And to see what happens. So I'll start a uh, host over there and connect over here. 
All right, and there they are. There are the unique names. And if I scroll down, I can see that they've been assigned, uh, which is good. So that's pretty much it, and it is working. Um, so yeah, okay, so I've got my unique identities, and uh, that means I can just put this back to private. There's no need for it to be public at all, unless I need to access it for some reason, but I haven't thought of any reason where I might, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Uh, and just leave it as it is. Okay, so that's it for this video. This is the very first step towards hit detection. So in the next video, I should be getting onto that. All right, thanks for watching, and I hope this has helped you.